Hey guys, Amy Rose here with AMC Movie News. Hope you're having a great holiday break. I'm going to run down my 10 most anticipated films of 2015. We're leaving 2014. 2015 for you. I'm going to start with some honorable mentions because 10 is really hard to narrow it down to when you have so many great ones coming out. So honorable mentions. I'm going to start with Mommy, Xavier Dolan's film. I have already seen it, so it's cheating a little bit, but it's that amazing. I want to see it again. Um, it's just a really powerful film that you should check out. This director is like 25 years old and he is just so wise beyond his years. Incredible film that comes out in January. Next up, I have Ant-Man. This did not make my cut for 10 because of all the madness surrounding this production. I wanted to see Edgar Wright's Ant-Man. It doesn't mean Peyton's Ant-Man's not gonna be amazing, but I already am a little disappointed about how just all that went down because I wanted to see that vision. So I'm still really excited seeing Paul Rudd and Michael Douglas on the big screen, making this character come alive. I'm really excited about it, but it didn't quite make my top 10. Next up, I have Cameron Crowe's film. It's untitled, not too many details coming up, but he's one of those filmmakers that never lets me down. He's given us some gems as almost famous and Jerry Maguire, and he just writes these incredible characters that are living and breathing off the screen for us before our eyes. So he's a really special filmmaker. I think that's the word for him. He's special. And uh, I'm really excited what he's going to give us next because he doesn't do a lot of films. So when he does, you know he puts his heart and soul into them. Next up, I have Mission Impossible 5. I love this franchise. I thought Ghost, Pro Ghost Protocol was fantastic. Um, Tom Cruise, I love him as an action star. I think he's really believable and he's got a great charisma on screen and they're just fun. These ridiculous situations they get into and this gadgetry. I love it. Sign me up. Next up, I have Ex Machinima. Um, I'm a big sci-fi fan. Oscar Isaac's in this one. He's one of my favorite actors out there right now. And I just think it has a very interesting conversation going on about the next level of artificial intelligence. So I'm in. The trailer was beautiful. Donald Gleason's in it as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really intrigued with this one. And then last up for my honorable mentions list, I have Chappie. Um, Neil Blomkamp, what he did with District 9, I mean, again, he raised the bar. I thought he was going to be one of the most innovative just directors on the scene, and then Elysium kind of let us down. So this one just looks good. He always talked about very sharp social and just political themes in his work, obviously. And I think he has a lot to say as a filmmaker, and I think this does look different. And then adding... Um, D ant word in there, die ant word, however you pronounce it. They are just so amazing as artists and I love them being added in the mix. So those are my uh, honorable mentions. Now going on to my main list, starting with my number 10, I have Tomorrowland. This looks so incredible. The trailer alone just looks like multiple, multiple dimensions and realities. Brad Bird, Damon Lindelof, of course. It just looks so exciting. I love sci-fi again, and this looks like it's going to show us the futuristic glossy elements of what could be on past this horizon and not you know, the post-apocalyptic scenario that we see a lot in the future. So it looks really exciting. That trailer was spectacular and it showed us just enough to get us excited but not enough where I fully know what's going to happen so I'm really excited about that number nine I have Mad Max Fury Road I grew up with this franchise the original one I love that the original creator is back to bring this new generation that trailer I thought was spectacular it looked like a choreographed dance of madness and explosions and beauty and Charlie's Theron looks gorgeous even with a shaved head and covered in dirt Nicholas Holt talk about a transformation and Tom Hardy, of course, he is just one hell of a good actor. So I'm really excited about this one. On my number eight, I have Crimson Peak. We all know I love my horror films, and Guillermo del Toro is the king of horror. I mean, whether it be more about creatures and mystical and, you know, that element of suspense and horror in Pan's Labyrinth or, you know, the other things he's done, Orphanage. I mean, he is so talented and I just love the formula of this and it's going to be like an old, you know, ghost story again, going back to the roots of this genre. So I'm really excited. And then that cast to boot, put a fork in me. Then I have number seven, Pitch Perfect 2. I loved the first film. I pretty much know the film by heart. I don't feel shame about that. I hope you don't either. It 
killed me. It was so funny, raunchy, that cast is great, Anna Kendrick, Rebel Wilson, and then having Elizabeth Banks at the helm for this one, I think her just natural comedic sensibilities and her charm and her wit, she's going to be a great, great director, and I think this is the property for her. I am so excited about that. Aka believe it. Then I have The Hunger Games at number six. I did read this franchise. I absolutely love what Frances Lawrence has done at the helm. I thought this last film, Mockingjay Part 1, was great. Catching Fire still my favorite of the franchise, but it was all leading up to what is about to come, and it's about to be super intense. Jennifer Lawrence, the cast is great. I'm really excited to see how they close out this chapter. It's going to be visually very spectacular because there's a lot that goes down. So buckle up. Of course, I love the Bond franchise, the different incarnations that have been going on throughout the decades. It's so exciting to me. I love Daniel Craig as Bond. He has both the womanizing sex appeal and also the badass can actually, you know, do great stunts himself. So I think he's the Bond that we all want. Sean Connery, you're still my number one, but I love him. Sam Mendes coming back. Um, Christoph Waltz, the cast is ridiculous. Leah said, though, I love her. And of course, Drax. So the cast is Great, I love this franchise. It's just so much fun. Again, that gadgetry always gets me. Then we have number four, The Revenant, Alejandro in era two. He did, of course, Birdman this year. He is such an acclaimed, extraordinary filmmaker that takes risk and he's just so true to his creative vision. And I'm just, every time I just completely just watching it unravel on screen is just, it's unique and really exhilarating and really sticks with you. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy are in this one. Do you need to say more about it? So excited. Um, then I have Midnight Special, Jeff Nichols. Of course, he did Take Shelter and Mud, two of the best indies in my opinion in the last few years. It's just, it's gonna be a different spin on the story. I don't wanna give away too much. Um, I have been kind of paying close attention to this one. Michael Shannon's in it, of course. and. It's gonna be, it's just gonna be a good ride. Jeff Nichols is a fantastic director. Number two, bum 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 bum, Avengers Age of Ultron. Obviously, that trailer, I just, it was just spectacular. That was art right there in just a couple minutes. And Joss Whedon coming back with, you know, adding the twins to the mix and Ultron, the silkiness of James Spader's voice, the stakes have been raised. I can't wait to see what our Avengers are in for and all of the character moments that Whedon gives each one of those incredible, incredible Marvel characters. I am so freaking excited, which leads us to my number one, Star Wars. It's not even close. It's not even close. It's Star Wars and then these other films. Star Wars is pretty much what showed me what's possible with the film world. I fell in love with this. I've mentioned Leia was my first costume ever when I was too young to really understand what it meant. And I just, I absolutely love this. The prequels really disappointed me. I know there's a lot of you out there that love them. I'm not in that camp, but the original trilogy just spectacular, absolutely spectacular. Having Carrie Fisher and Hamill and Ford come back and then the new generation of Jedis and Sis, whatever we're in for, I'm so freaking excited. I cannot wait to see it on the big time, big screen multiple times. And I finally brought my seven-year-old nephew over and he is definitely a Padawan. I love him. I just bought him his first Millennium Falcon Lego piece and it's on. So we're definitely gonna make it a family event and I am so excited. So running down again, um, my honorables and Included Mommy, Ant Man, Mission Impossible 5, Cameron Crowe's untitled film, Chappie, and X Machinima. And my top 10, starting with my 10, Tomorrowland, number 9, Mad Max Fury Road, number 8, Crimson Peak, number 7, Pitch Perfect 2, number 6, The Hunger Games, Mocking Jay Part 2, number 5, Bond, number 4, The Revenant from Alejandro in the Rotu. Number three, Midnight Special from Jeff Nichols. Number two, Avengers Age of Ultron, baby. And number one, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're all having great holidays, and we'll see you soon. Hey, everyone. If you like this video, click that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It's free and helps you stay up to date with all the latest movie news, as well as our daily AMC Movie Talk Show. Also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with all of our special promotions, contests, and prize giveaways.